I like to do like my first impression videos a little bit different. Um, I like to actually go out into the world and use the camera. And this video is my first 24 hours with the Nikon Z9 paired with this 500 PF. And I had one of the most amazing wildlife experiences I've ever had, something I didn't think I would ever see. I can't wait to share it with you. So come on, let's go. One of the great things about wildlife photography is spending quality time with your friends. And when they're proudly displaying magnificent breeding plumage like this great blue heron, who could complain? From the long tendril-like feathers cascading down its chest, to the elaborate colored beak and purple laurels just below the eye. This stunning specimen of a bird might be the most beautiful great blue heron I have ever had the pleasure of spending time with. What a great way to start the day, and the Nikon Z9 really shines in this video clip. The color, clarity, and overall rendering is just beautiful. Let's leave this graceful bird to the early morning light and head out to the beach and see what we can find. Oh, a wondrously weary wintering white pelican has decided that lazily floating in the early morning breeze is the perfect way to greet the sun. Down by the beach and breakfast is served. This snowy egret has managed to pull a nice fish from the rocks. That's a goby. The snowy egret's meal has captured the attention of this great egret. And it seems to be thinking, hey, are you gonna eat that? Let's see if we can get some shots before the snowy egret swallows its meal. One thing that's undeniable here are those beautiful Nikon colors. The Z9 continues on with Nikon's legacy of nice color rendering. The images are punchy and contrasty and seem to take on a life of their own. But back to matters at hand, or should I say matters at beak, this fish is a nice meal that isn't going to be wasted. Down the hatch. What does a snowy egret do after a meal like that? Well, it poses for the camera. There is so much to see in this shot, and I mean that literally. You've got this goofy pose, but let's take a look at the detail here. The detail in the face is amazing. You can see every wisp of this bird's feathers, but what really caught my attention were those scale-covered feet. Simply amazing you can actually see each and every tiny piece of sand stuck to this bird's scaly digits. I don't know about you, but I don't really like sand between my toes. This snowy egret though, it doesn't seem to mind. Over in the tide pool and things are a little bit different. The cormorants seem to be bowing before their newly appointed leader. All hail Barry, he has been chosen. While the white pelicans, they continue their lazy early morning floats. This great blue heron gives us a really good example of varying light. In the first shot, there was really heavy overcast and you can tell from the muted colors, which works well for this bird and it gives the image a sort of darker, more solemn look, but I could see a small hole in the clouds and the sun was lower on the horizon, so I waited it out. And for just a split second, that beautiful golden light found its way to my subject. The image pops more, and now it has that nice warm glow to it. Sometimes you just have to wait a second for the light to change. Back over at the tide pool and we have even more overcast light and skiing white pelicans. <laughs> These birds don't waste any energy, so something must be happening here. 
an osprey makes a quick appearance and surveys the area, while another white pelican comes skiing in to join the rest of the gulp. Things are starting to move pretty quickly now, but a single royal turn catches my eye because it's decided it's bath time, and the 20 frames per second really comes in handy, allowing me to capture some beautifully symmetrical wing positions before my session gets photobombed by a, whoa, that's a beautiful black skimmer. I hate to be the one to tell you this bird, but you got a little bit of dirt on your feet there. Hey, what's going on over there? What in the world? That white pelican has a brown pelican's head in its mouth. I've seen pelicans fight, but I've never seen them do this. That brown pelican must have something really tasty in its pouch. These white pelicans are winter migrants, and I'm guessing from this behavior, they didn't get enough food on their way down. Our osprey that was checking the area out a little bit ago, it suddenly makes an appearance and comes out of the water right next to me with a huge mullet. Back down in the water with the pelicans and they are really going at it now. I'm not sure what they have, but our osprey has decided to give us a much better view of its prized catch. Look at those meat hooks. With one talon deep in the fish's back and the other set clamped tight around the mullet's tail, this fish isn't going anywhere. And as the bird turns away, we get one last up close and personal look at the fish. Ooh, nature is brutal. And the predator prey food chain is often very predictable but nothing prepared me for the predator-prey role reversal that happened next. A single white pelican has escaped the pesky pelican pileup and it comes gliding in with something in its pouch. What in the world? Is that what I think it is? That tail looks like, no, could it be? Come on, open up your mouth just a little more. Oh my, that is a shark. This white pelican has a baby bonnet head shark in its pouch. This is the ultimate role reversal. I can see the headlines now. Florida man captures images of pelican eating a shark. Here's time for the weather. But can this bird really swallow a shark? Maybe not. It looks like it's about to get away. Oh, it's so close to escaping. But this pelican isn't losing what it fought so hard to claim and with one final clap of its impressive beak, it seals the shark's fate, tilts its head back, and swallows the shark whole. Unfreaking believable Talk about being in the right place at the right time. This was it. Now we know why they call that bird a pelican and not a pelicant, because it can and will eat anything that fits in its pouch. Yeah, it's a bad joke, but I did it anyways. I've spent a lot of time around pelicans. I've unhooked a lot of them that have been tangled in lines. Um, and when you're face to face with a pelican, they can be kind of frightening. Seeing one eat a shark adds a whole new level of fear and respect to those birds. They're big and they're, they're amazing at what they do. They're awesome birds. Um, if you have any questions about the Z9, anything specific about it, leave them in the comments below and I'll actually do a question and answer video where I just answer those questions. I've spent, a little over, I think, a week with this camera now. There's a lot of things about it that I like and there's a lot of things about it that I don't like and I need to spend more time with it to fully understand these things that I don't like, to make sure it's not something that I'm doing wrong, to make sure that it's not a setting that I have done incorrectly. But Nikon shooters, you'll be happy to know that there is a Nikon mirrorless that can do a lot of the things that some of the great cameras on the market like the Sony A1 and the Canon R5 can do. How well does it compete with those cameras? Well, only time will tell, and I'll be able to do some comparison videos with those cameras coming up. So if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do that. I'm gonna put my 200 to 500 lens on this, my 500 F4, um, and maybe some of the newer Z lenses. And again, like I said, I'll do some comparison videos with some of the Sony gear and maybe some of the Canon gear as well. So subscribe. If you thought this video was helpful, share it. The Pelican eating a shark, I think everybody should see that. It uh, puts things into a whole new perspective. Um, like, share, comment, all that good stuff. Uh, and until next time, I'll see you later.